from the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation, Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead and today I'm at the brand new store Heartland Outdoors Gun and Archery Range up in Edmond. And I'm with Robert Ingram. Robert, you're the archery manager. You see a lot of folks coming through here, I'm sure, that are probably getting started hunting. What would you say would be the percentage of those that are just starting out archery hunting? Probably a, at least 20% of them, and, and a majority of them has thought about it, mm -hmm. but it, it seems since our season gets extended that all the way into January, you know, the, everybody's thinking about doing it even more. That's right. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Say uh, I'm a new customer, just interested in getting started bow hunting. What would you say would be the single most important uh, tip for me as a new archer? After you did all your homework and and you're looking at your maps and stuff, the best thing to do is to get out and do your scouting. It all looks different <laughs> from a computer to, to when you're walking around. Sure. But but good old hands-on scouting, that, that's that's the best thing that you could you could possibly do. No substitute for that. No. You know, no and that works that works just perfect into what we're going to be doing today. We're going to follow along with two archers. They're not brand new, but they are hunting a brand new area they've never hunted before. You may know Rich Fuller, of course, and his archery buddy Jack Mills are headed up to a brand new public area in northwest Oklahoma. It's the Cimarron Hills Wildlife Management Area in northwest Oklahoma. They've never set foot on the place, so of course, like Robert said, they're going to have to do a lot of scouting. It's time to start, isn't it? It's way past time to start. Should have been doing this all summer long. Yep. Gee, but I'm sweating to death. Now, let me get one more shot off and let's go down and get our arrows and we'll... That'll work. Okay. There you go. You're grouping good. Well, hey, I uh, have done already some looking on our, you know, digital atlas, but I wanted to look at that, look at some of that stuff with you. Cool. So uh, let's, when we head inside and dial up the net and I'll show you what I was looking at the site pulled up oh okay okay looking at okay Cimarron Hills yeah you know and I don't know which one we kind of want to concentrate our efforts I figured when we go up there and scout we can kind of yeah. take a look at both of them because they're you know like within three miles of each other man me personally I, I, I like you know looking at all those features on the data viewer and kind of zooming in and out and stuff it's just me, I guess. I always like to get a, a hard copy map, and I and I printed off one for each yeah. area. There's Cimarron Hills, and there's Cimarron Bluff. Out here, to me anyway, is really the lack of trees. Yeah. I mean, believe it or not, I mean. Yeah. If you know, there's you're gonna be we're gonna be limited on places that we can you know hang a tree stand, but that's that's not a bad problem because you know, where the really, trees it'll are, be an attraction for the deer. That's right. Yeah. Where where the where the trees are is where the deer habitat is. Did you need an extra map? There's one right. There. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Excellent. Good man. The trees are a little bit bigger over here. Yeah. It looks like you could kind of take turkey feathers. Oh, sure enough, yeah. Oh. 
This area is open for turkey season? I believe it is. Excellent. It is. Yeah, look at there. That, yeah, it is going to be kind of snaky getting up in there. But yeah, once yeah. you get up beyond the snake area. That's... Yeah. It looks like this is a kind of a natural crossing area for them, so. Well, I'm gonna lock this one in, man. All right. Waypoint number two. Got her. Well, we got at least a couple spots. Yeah. What's the need, be a neat place to bring the kids too, and just walk around, you know, and hike around during the non-hunting area, yeah. non-hunting season, I mean. Oh, yeah, you come back out here, you know, and the month of March, look for sheds and do a little turkey scouting too. There you go. So, you know. Well, let's go check out that other drainage, but I think we got something to work on. Okay, sounds good. We're back here at Heartland Outdoors in Edmond, and Robert, there's a tremendous amount of people that are just starting bow hunting for the first time now. What do you attribute most of that to? The the 107 day season, it, it's it's just, you know, it's it's getting all your gun hunters in here. You know, they they have their traditional 16 days. Mm -hmm. Well, this 107 is is creating more opportunity for them. That's exactly right. It's kind of a no-brainer. 107 days or just 16. Why not just do both, right? Exactly. <laughs> you know, speaking of opportunity, most all of our WMAs, we have over 75 WMAs around the state, and most of them are open that entire season too. Yes, it, they are, and it's uh, like you said, it just creates it creates opportunity, and you know, for an archer to say he doesn't have a place to hunt these WMAs, that's that's, that's not, just not true. true right? That's not true. <laughs> that's right. Well, we'll rejoin Jack and Rich right after this. Hi everybody, joining me is Jeff Steele, the current president of the Bow Hunting Council of Oklahoma. Jeff, how does somebody learn more about the Bow Hunting Council and or join your organization? Just go to our website and log on there. The information's all there. Someone will contact you. We'll mail you whatever literature you need. You can do it online. Uh, just give us a holler on the website. We'll fix you up. A great tool for learning uh, all kinds of information about archery hunting opportunities in Oklahoma and some good advice, like I say. So for those of you archers out there want to learn more about bow hunting in Oklahoma, contact the Bow Hunting Council of Oklahoma. Stay windy like this, so. I don't get them, I don't get them just, you know, real super tight when it's this windy. I let it blow around a little bit. All right. I think that looks good. Well, man, we need to be heading out. You, you want to do a little, you want to do little shooting? Yeah, you want to shoot a few arrows before we head out? Sure. Sure. Do it. Okay. I'm going up this way? Yeah. Thank good luck. Out here in the west, northwest Oklahoma, a lot of bow hunters come out here and say, man, there's just not, there's not, just not very good places to hunt. Well, the truth is there aren't a lot of trees and the small grove of uh, what we call soapberry trees is like where I'm sitting now. That's about kind of the habitat you're going to have, a place to hang a tree stand, but guess what? That's where the deer usually are, is where uh, the drainages are, where the, the, the what little few trees are out here on some of these western wildlife management areas like Cimarron Bluff, Cimarron Hills, Canton Wildlife Management Area, Beaver River, Pack Saddle, Black Kettle, uh, all of those western Oklahoma wildlife management areas that don't have a lot of trees, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you find the trees, 
you find a place to set up with a tree stand, that's usually going to be a good place where the deer are going to travel through. So that's what we're hoping for here and uh, encourage anyone, if they want to hunt a new place, don't overlook western Oklahoma as far as archery bow hunting opportunities. It's, uh, uh, the, the bow hunting can be excellent. Uh, some of these areas, are it's a long walk into from the parking areas, but uh, it's well worth the, the walk if you want to uh, go down and set up a tree stand like we've done here. So. Two deer there. That was another deer. What do I think inside? You see him coming in on your seat. There you are. Man, it's way over there. You must have, uh, I was getting slightly worried, but uh, figured you knew how to uh, get back to camp. Well, did you see any? Man, I did not, but uh, didn't see any deer, but my confidence is good because from the time that I set that stand up to the time going back tonight, there are some pretty fresh tracks going through there. Excellent, excellent. See, I, I definitely want to try that spot in the morning. How about you? I saw three. Well, all right. Yeah. We were, Good. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was walking in, and I was going up over that over the hill where that that post is. Right. And, uh, I, I saw something flash. Okay. You know, tail. And I, but I, I looked my binoculars, didn't see anything. I got down a little further, and uh, and then he got up and ran. He was probably about 75 yards away from me, a little buck. You're not real big. Okay. And then I saw. And then he was with a doe, and the doe took off running. So I got over in the stand. And, uh, Did you have any problem finding it? No, no, not at all. Good, at all. good. And uh, so I was up in the stand, and, and probably about five or so, you know, it stopped. The wind started stopped blowing. Right. I see a tail over to the right of me, you know, on the other side of that creek bed. Right. And uh, so I looked at my binoculars, and um, Rich, I saw a big buck. I mean, he's he's a uh, he's definitely Cy Curtis, not bigger. I mean, wow. he's a big buck. He's That's big buck. Standing. So um, he um, excellent. He was standing over there and he was rubbing on a tree and then no he did a little eating and oh my man gosh. making a scrape or something and and, uh, and so cool. then he started tooling across and uh, I I grunted and it was so windy he couldn't hear me and finally he was probably about 75 yards away 175 to 100 and I grunted again and finally he started he looked at me and he sat there for a minute and he just looked at me. And then he got, went back down and he started walking off again. And I grunted again and he stopped again. And uh, uh, I don't know if he saw me move when I put my grunt call in to try to, I was trying to grunt at him right, again. Right. Or if he didn't win me because the wind was heading right towards okay. him. But, but he took off running. Oh. But he was, he was a beautiful deer, just, oh. just flat beautiful.
Well, you see anything? I did. And you? Yeah, I saw a, uh, a doe and she came in on me. Really? A little bit and then she took off running and couldn't quite figure out what was going on and this little buck came in. A little, a little four pointer. All right. A little, little buck. I mean, he stuck around for a while. Yeah. yeah I, didn't, I didn't get, he wasn't close enough for a shot and I probably would have shot anyway, but he was a nice little buck. We had a, I had a doe come in behind us and she was downwind, but, and I know our scent was blowing straight to her because I was just looking at her and I mean, I felt the wind on the back of my neck, but she never really did spook off. She just kind of, kind of skippered on off, but yeah, it was exciting. Buck, this buck, he sniffed me, but he didn't, he didn't scare him too bad. So, hey, you know that buck I saw last night, I, I, uh, I saw him, I thought he was scraping, so I went over there and he was. It was really? a big, big, there's a bunch of rubs and there's a scrape right there. Man. So, yeah. well, Maybe we can get back out here and get back after him. Uh -huh. I know you got to take off, but yeah. uh, anyway, enjoyed hunting with you. Man, thank and, you uh, very much. Yeah, man. You bet, you bet. That was a blast. For those of you who've uh, watched at home, thanks for watching. And join us here each and every week on Outdoor Oklahoma. Well, Robert, we're about out of time today, but standing in front of this 3D archery target reminds me that 3D archery tournaments are a great way to meet friends and to uh, get information and maybe even a place or two to hunt, right? You're, you're right, Todd. It's, uh, we, we have several local shoots around and, you know, like you said, it's a great place to meet a new friend and possibly a hunting partner. That's right. You know, you can find, there's several websites around, especially ours at wildlifedepartment.com, where you can get information about 3D archery tournaments around the state. Yes. Now, you've been an archer hunter for quite a while, a uh, bow hunter, and you probably, no doubt, remember the Wildlife Management Area Atlas. Do you remember that years yes. ago? It yes. was very popular. We went to a digital version of that that was only available online several years ago. Well. Back by public demand, we are now going to debut another new edition of the Wildlife Management Area Atlas this fall. So uh, it may not be on the shelves quite yet by the time you all are watching this, but this fall of 2010 will debut a brand new atlas and it's better than ever. Man, I, that would be great because I've, I've been waiting to, to get something like that in here, you know, just to help not only me, but my customers, they, they, they would really appreciate it. Well, I've sne seen a sneak peek of it and it's impressive. <laughs> You're gonna want uh, one yourself too. Man, I, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us everyone. And Robert, thanks for letting us hang out here to, at Heartland today. Hey, thank y'all for coming out. You bet. For all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you somewhere new next time on Outdoor Oklahoma.